So if you go to, oh, there's no page numbers, but like the third page, here's the plan. Uh, these are the most important things you can do to overcome high blood pressure. One is the obvious drink water, be hydrated. Very, very, very critically important. That's the number one thing. Exercise. Not just to, I mean, there's so many reasons we have to exercise, but strengthening the muscles, getting oxygen to the body, strengthening the heart. But one of the most important things exercise does is it opens up the veins and the arteries and the capillaries, especially those little tiny capillaries. Those are the first things that get clogged up. Those little capillaries that go to our fingers and our toes, they're the main component of that 100,000 mile network that we talked about. And those things just, they start to get cut off. You know, and people start to get tingling in their hands and feet or get cold hands and feet. You know, they, they lose circulation of those areas because those little capillaries start getting cut off. So exercise will reopen those passageways and restore that blood flow. And that's very, very important. So just How another reason. How about taking niacin? A lot, of, a lot of people take niacin for you can, cold hand, cold feet. But that's just a Band-Aid. All niacin does is a vasodilator. It just helps expand the blood vessels. And that's fine, you know, but you're not, if, if you have high blood pressure, you're not treating the problem. You're band-aiding it with a, with a pill. So you can take that, that's fine, but, you know. Exercise too. Yeah, it's more important to, you know, follow a healthy lifestyle. I'm really big on, well, the other thing I should mention too that I didn't put in there, a couple of things, is one is, you know, avoid sugar the best you can. And uh, we're gonna do a class on sugar, yes, we talk about it in class, we're gonna do a class on sugar. <laughs> but yeah, avoid sugar the best you can and refined carbohydrates and breads and pastas and things like that. Eat more healthy because that constant bombardment of sugar raises insulin levels which completely clogs our bloodstream and it basically creates a toxic environment in the body that the body has to continuously deal with. So avoid sugar, eat well. And the other one is mineralize your body, get remineralized. We've talked a lot in here about mineralization in past classes. Shilajit is my favorite for mineralization. Sea salts, sea vegetables, foods that are high in minerals. Uh, but minerals, very, very critically important as well. Herbs. There's a lot of great herbs you can take for the cardiovascular system. Uh, I mentioned just a few of them here, just a few of my favorite ones. Um, garlic and ginger are both great for circulation, both anticoagulants, which means they keep the blood platelets from sticking together and clumping. Jogulin might be my favorite. Uh, it's known as the Chinese immortality herb. And it strengthens the heart, um, helps it to beat and operate more efficiently. Um, studied extensively in China um, to lower and normalize blood pressure, cholesterol levels, triglycerides. It's been used for asthma, allergies. Jogulin is one of my favorite plants. It's also considered one of the 22 superior Chinese tonic herbs that we've talked about before in class, also known as ganyostema, is the Latin name for jogulin. So that's one of my favorites, and, and it tastes good. Some of you are drinking jogulin tea, right? Yeah, and it, it tastes good. I mean, it's a good, it's a good little tea to drink, so. Garlic, ginger, hawthorn, a lot of people have heard of, astragalus, and medicinal mushrooms. Medicinal mushrooms are awesome for everything, but also for heart health, the immune system, strengthening the heart. So, any questions on that? And then we're gonna dive into cholesterol. But any questions on blood pressure, or high blood pressure, or what causes it, or what you can do about it? Because it's really pretty dang simple. And I know we didn't really get into talking about medications and things like that, but we can. Was that what you were going to ask? I mean, well, my question was, I mean, I know you're not saying, well, okay, just get out of medicine. Right. But you, you got to work yourself, like I said, change your lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Or wean. Yeah, wean yourself off. Wean off. Uh -huh. See, it depends on the medication. And here's the unfortunate thing that's happening in the medicine. The doctors aren't really taking the time, and it's not their fault most of the time because they're so busy and they, they're trying to run through 100 people a day. Mm -hmm. So you have high blood pressure and they'll give you a medication and either it'll work or, or it won't, but half the time it won't. And they'll say, oh, that didn't work, here, try this one. Mm -hmm. So they, they guess until they get one that lowers your blood pressure. But every one of those medications that lower your blood pressure, what it does is it's, it, it halts a function in your body, okay? okay? That's what medications do, they suppress functions in the body. And for example, uh, a lot of people take calcium channel blockers. That's one of the common medications that people take for high blood pressure. Well, calcium is constricting, magnesium is relaxing, okay? 
So magnesium is a vasodilator. It violate, uh, dilates the blood vessels, helps blood flow. Calcium is constricting. Well, what happens is, is calcium, free-floating calcium in the bloodstream shouldn't be there. It should be in our bones and teeth, but it's not there because we eat sugar, we don't eat the right foods, we're acidic, we eat lots of meat and dairy. All these things cause free-floating calcium to be pulled from the bones and float through the bloodstream, and what that happens is that constricts the blood vessels. So what they do is they give you a calcium channel blocker. And when in fact all they need to do is give you the thing that antagonizes <coughs> calcium, and the best thing that antagonizes slash balances calcium is magnesium. So that's really all you need to take if, if that's what's causing it. But again, there's different things that cause it. There's ACE inhibitors, which is from excess adrenaline production in the adrenal glands, but we won't get into all that. But a lot of times they guess on the medication because they don't really know or look into what's causing your high blood pressure. So they just give you medications and they find one that happens to work and then they just kind of monitor it and see how you do. But that's something you're able to do. You're able to determine if it's magnesium levels that are low in the body. Well, yeah. It, if you're taking a certain medication, I mean, I can tell you what kind of medication it is and what's going on in the body that's causing that. Um, but again, it's like I said, it's pretty simple. Address these three things, and it really doesn't matter what medication you're on. You know, uh -huh. you know, you, you start exercising, you 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 get hydrated, you know, you cut back on the sugars and the kind of the empty carbs, um, and then I'll tell you how to deal with the scar tissue. But if you deal with those things, it really doesn't matter what medication you're on. And the person is not on medication, but the borderline being on it, uh, mm -hmm. the the uh, you take. Uh, magnesium then? To that'd be one, one great thing to take, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be definitely one thing I'd add to my list. Mm. Any other questions? I may be jumping ahead a little bit because you might cover this later. But okay. Let's say someone has abused their body for years mm -hmm. and they have substantial kidney damage. Mm -hmm. They choose to change their lifestyle and get healthier. Mm -hmm. Are there supportive herbs or anything that can regenerate that? Big time. Yeah, the body was created to function properly and to be healthy. And, you know, God created a perfect machine. He did. We abused the crap out of it. And we can keep abusing it, and the body can take a lot. It's amazing what the body can put up with before all of a sudden we're, we have a disease. You know, but the body will tolerate a lot, and it has a lot of defense mechanisms in place to compensate for these things. We've talked about some of these things in the past. Um, for example, when you eat too much, your stomach doesn't explode, it expands. You know, I mean, there's all these things going on in the body that's, you know, your body's like, okay, how do I deal with this? You know, um, and just a side note to give you another kind of cool example is, you know, the reason people get abnormal growths and cysts and tumors and things like that is that the body's so toxic and full of poisons that the body ha has to just store it because it can't deal with it right now and it's going to deal with it later. So it just, it starts to form these abnormal growths in the body. Um, so yeah, the body has defense mechanisms and it can heal. It wants to heal, but you have to help it. You have to help it. So you just, combination of lifestyle changes and the body will heal very, very fast. Uh, especially the liver and kidneys. You know, the liver and kidneys are, are two criti critically important organs. How and about lung? Huh? Lung? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, you can, you can, I, I, I'm a firm believer you can heal anything. You know? I mean, obviously there's certain genetic things that happen, and yeah, genetics do play a role in certain <laughs> conditions, and if you have cerebral palsy or something like that, yeah, I mean, that's a challenge. But, most of the things that we deal with, like I said, these diseases of affluence, the cancer, the diabetes, the heart disease, not necessary. We can totally deal with those and reverse those and fix those things. So we can talk another time on specific you know, things, but we're, we're gonna, you know, a lot of them are gonna be covered here. I mean, when you're talking about kidney health, man, water, 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 water. No soda, no milk, no beer, no wine, water. There's nothing more important than the kidneys. I mean, that's what keeps the, the kidneys functioning is water, period. So, but there's other things. Would tea fall into that too? What's that? Would tea fall into that? Part herbal teas, water? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and especially if you want to target the kidneys, certain herbal teas, teas that are good for the kidneys. Parsley, juniper berries. I mean, there's all kinds of great things that help heal and rebuild the kidneys. But, you know, like you were asking, um, uh, you know, if you have severe kidney damage and you know that, like from a doctor, or, you know, however you might 
know that um, it might be scar tissue. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, actually, I should talk about that before we get into cholesterol. Okay, we've talked about enzymes before. And enzymes, I'm a big, big fan of enzymes, you know, and I'm not talking digestive enzymes, although digestive enzymes are important, but that's what most people think of when they think of enzymes is digestive enzymes. I'm talking about systemic enzymes. Enzymes that work systemically throughout the rest of the body for all the different important functions that enzymes do, okay? And one of the most important functions that they do is clean up the bloodstream and clean up scar tissue. They are scavengers. Those enzymes get in the system and anything that shouldn't be there, they start gobbling it up. Scar tissue, which is composed of fibrin, um, and that's what hardens the arteries, just so you know. The, the veins and arteries are very pliable, okay? And when they get damaged and the cholesterol deposits in there and the scar tissue starts to build up there, that's really hard, okay? And that's what causes that, the, the hardening, they call it the hardening in the veins and arteries. So that fibrin, that scar tissue builds up in there, builds up in the veins and arteries, builds up in the muscles, like people that have fibromyalgia, um, closes off those little capillaries going to our fingers and toes. And so enzymes is the single best thing that you can put in your body to clean up that damage, clean up that damaged scar tissue. Most of you have already heard my testimonial of my uncle, but there's a couple of new people here, so I'm going to tell you that again. My uncle had a 70% blockage in his arteries, and uh, I ha wanted him to take the enzymes. So I had him take the enzymes, and I also had him take a, a whole food-based vitamin C. And I told him to take them for six months, and of course, like most people, he's stubborn and only took them for three months. But he went back to the doctor, and the doctor said, you have... I don't know what you did, but you have 0% blockage. Not 30 or 20%, it was 0% blockage. And his exact words were, you have the blood of a teenager. And that was after taking these enzymes for three months. So that's how powerful these enzymes are. They're cleaning out the veins and arteries. And changes, cleaning up scar tissue. Didn't change his eating? No. He well, he, <laughs> he did change his eating a little bit, but according to what the doctor said, which is kind of unfortunate. but. He, he cut out meat completely, which isn't necessary, but he did, and he's eating like tons and tons of fish, because that's what his doctor told him to do. So he made that change, but that's really it. So, yeah. So yeah, enzymes are amazing, and they do so many different functions. That, you know, they reduce inflammation, um, they destroy the protein shell structure around viruses and parasites and fungus and things like that. People that take enzymes on a regular basis don't get sick. They just don't get sick. And I've been taking enzymes for five or six years now. Now I take other herbs and stuff like that. But you know, I used to get sick two, three times a year. And it's not a big deal getting sick. I'm not saying you're like super healthy if you don't get sick. But I haven't been sick in six years now. And I used to get sick, you know, three, four times a year, always in the winter. You know, I'd always get sick. Um, but getting sick, like I said, isn't a bad thing. Getting sick it can be a good thing. I mean, it's the body stimulating a healing response, trying to push something out that shouldn't be there. And that's okay. But there are ways to prevent yourself from getting sick. If you don't like being sick, I don't like being sick, so I choose not to. But. So those are just some of the basic functions of enzymes. Um, but yeah, they can clean up that scar tissue that's clogging up those kidneys too. Very important. So any questions on enzymes? It's pills, yeah, yeah. It's the only thing I take in a pill every day because I, like I tell everybody, I'm not a pill taker. I don't like taking pills. I like eating really good foods and really good supplements and powders and liquids and things like that. I don't pill popping's not fun to me, but the enzymes are one thing I take every day in pill. Probably the only.